The power method makes executive communications easy. What this is, is my proprietary method on how you can approach executive communications. And it's based on the five biggest mistakes executives makes when they are communicating and what you should do instead. So what I'm gonna share with you is the power method, P-O-W-E-R. Power starts with P and P means present with intention. You see, the first biggest mistake that executives make in their communication is the assumption that communications is to impress. They try to impress their higher-ups. They try to impress members of their audience. And whenever you try to impress somebody, you put yourself inferior to them. You have to look up to them and try to make that impression. And you're overly concerned about what they think. And that is a disempowering position to be in. So instead, instead, present with intention. So this is where you decide, what is my intention as I communicate? Am I intending to inform? Do I intend to influence them towards a certain decision? Do I intend to influence? Do I intend to inspire them? What is your intention going into it and based on your intended outcome? And when you have that, you approach the conversation with intention. You set the intention towards that outcome and it will guide you on what to say and what not to say. Simply by having clarity on your intention going in and your intention to communicate with the audience and to create that particular message for them, it goes a long way at giving you clarity. You know where to focus and where to spend your energy preparing for that conversation. So that is why the first method is to letter P and that is to present with intention. The next letter in the power method is O and O stands for to offer a value exchange. And this is based on the second biggest mistake executives make in their communication. And the mistake they make is not offering fair exchange of value in their communication. So what do I mean by fair exchange? Fair exchange means that it's a win for them and it's a win for you. It means that you're helping them to achieve their number one priority and in exchange, you also get to achieve your highest priority and vice versa. So there is a fair exchange. Fair exchange is important because fair exchange is the only way that communications are meaningful. It's also the only way that, that relationships are sustainable, sustainable fair exchange. So when you offer fair exchange of value, your audience can feel heard and understood and appreciated. And in exchange, you also get to feel heard and understood and appreciated. And both of you can achieve value of, that's important to you, value that's important to them out of the conversation you have or out of the presentation that you have when you set, once you've set the intent as we talked about earlier. So that is why the second letter to the power method is O and that is to offer fair exchange. The next letter in the power method is W and W stands for working on communication skills. And this is based upon the third biggest mistake executives make when communicating. And this mistake is that they believe that communication is all about the tips and tricks. What is a tip? for improving my communication? What's a hack? What's a trick that I can do? Thinking that it is just some little secret that they need to tweak and then they can communicate sustainably. Communication is a skill. And when you are developing your skill, you know that it's a journey to develop your skill. There is a commitment behind it. There is consistent, intelligent action to which to develop and improve that skill. A skill does not require, does not, is not built overnight. A skill is not honed overnight. A skill is not optimized overnight. A skill is a series of intelligent actions we take based on an accurate assessment of how we're doing and the progress that we're making. And it really is a series of commitments we make on a day-to-day -day towards this journey of improvement. And communication skills is no different than developing any other skill you've developed in your life and in your career as well. So when we commit to working on our communication skills, we are committing to working on all the elements of communication. So what do I mean by elements of communication? I mean, not just the words that you say and how you say it, but also how to organize your thoughts on the strategy behind what you're going to say and how you're going to position it. Also on the strategy of understanding other people's receptivity of what you're going to say. Also the strategy on how you're going to carry out your intent of communicating if you are wanting to persuade versus if you are wanting to up inform them or inspire them. This is all part of the elements of communication in addition to what you say and how you say it and how you convey accurate meaning so that there is no misinterpretation. 
So all of these elements of communication are part and parcel of the communication skill. How are you going to work on that communication skill? How are you going to be able to assess your progress? How are you going to be able to hold your feet to the fire so that you don't give up when the challenges are tough? How are you going to be able to know that you are practicing in the right ways? Because the whole saying that practice makes perfect is only half true. Practice makes perfect, yeah, but you have to also remember that practice makes permanent. So depending on what you're practicing, that becomes permanent. Do you really want what you're practicing to become permanent? Or do you want a different result? This is really important to understand what am I practicing? Am I practicing the right thing? Am I practicing what works to give me the outcome that I desire? So this is all part of working on your communication skills. So if you're listening to this, and for most people, communication skills is the one missing link to be able to have that executive communication skills. And if that's for you, and now you are serious and committed to investing in yourself, then I invite you to work with me. Below this video, the very first link is an application just for you to take a few minutes to work out, to fill out so that we can understand you. And then you'll have an opportunity to speak with a member of my executive coaching team. And this is where we're gonna work with you to understand where you're at, what your goals are for your professional growth. And if it's the right match, then you can enter into my exclusive community in my mentorship. Every single week I offer live trainings with me directly, live trainings to help you to hone your communication skills, to help you to be able to present with intent, to help you to have the strategy and the mindset behind it as well, and that you can develop the skill set with consistency and persistency. What do you practice? How do you position this way? And what do you, how do you navigate through the differences from other people's perspectives? How do you navigate through the challenges that necessarily come up in your communications? So we're gonna be working on that and I'm gonna be here as your mentor and your coach to guide you through your journey. So if you're committed and you're serious about achieving this outcome, then click on the link below and I look forward to working with you on the inside. The second last letter in the power method is E and E stands for enhance discoverability. Now this one is based on the fourth biggest mistake executive communicators make when they are trying to communicate and the mistake they make is trying to find opportunities. They go out there and it's the grind of looking for opportunities, trying to network with people, trying to articulate their suitability for it, and just finding opportunities and feeling overwhelmed with needing, needing to have involvement in so many different areas and being fully distracted by all that they have to do to keep up with looking for opportunities. And so that's why instead of finding opportunities, how can you make yourself discoverable? How can you make it so that people come to you? How can you make it so that people hear about you and you become a thought leader? You see, when it comes to executive communications, one of the biggest goals executives have is to become a sought after communicator. Becoming sought after doesn't mean that you go out looking for opportunities. It means that you're sought after. People come looking for you and when they find you, they're grateful to have found you. So this is a very important breakthrough of how can you make executive communications easy? How can you become empowered in executive communications? When you have the strategy to leverage your executive communications to become more discoverable in your industry, then you have this part, the E in the power method, enhancing your discoverability. And the last letter in the power method is R. And R stands for Relay Principles. This is based on the fifth biggest mistake that I see executives make when they're communicating. And the mistake is that they feel the need to communicate everything they know, to be able to share everything they know so that their audience can really see how much they know. And when it comes to sharing everything you know, most of the time communicators focus on all the tactics, all the details, and then their audience gets, just gets lost in a sea of details. Instead, my method focuses on principles. Principles is a higher level of learning. It's also a higher level of teaching and communicating. When you can relay the principles of what you know instead of everything you know, then you come across as having deeper insight. Principles come from wisdom. Principles are a source of wisdom. In order for you to have this source of wisdom, you will have already gone through a cycle of critical thinking. 
you really you will have already gone through a cycle of confirming and disconfirming your beliefs, confirming and disconfirming your theories, confirming and disconfirming your insights and developing a very mature and thoughtful point of view. It's only then that you can relay principles successfully and clearly and succinctly. And that is what I call true wisdom, wisdom of the ages. So when you practice this last part, relay principles, you become an executive communicator. Because as an executive, what do they desire from you? They desire your insights. They desire to know how your expertise is going to help them to achieve their strategic goals. That's how you achieve it, is by relaying your principles. When I mentioned the five biggest mistakes that executive communicators make, I did a whole video on that where I went into much more detail. And this video coming up next talks about how executive communications are easy when you conduct them this way. So if you want to hear how, what the biggest mistakes are going into a lot more depth, that video is coming right up next and I'll see you there.